Well, good morning and welcome to my shop. My granddaughters went home, so it's a little quiet in my shop. I really miss them. We had a great time. A shout out to Tom Stratton of TomTurns.com, the British Turner. So I was featured on his website and it's called In His Own Words. But anyway, I appreciate that, Tom. I know that's a lot of work. Today we're going to talk about tool steel. And no matter what you turn, here's a little decorative plate. No matter what you turn, a bowl or a pen or whatever it is, if you're a woodworker, it starts with steel. All right, and we're going to talk about steel and specifically the Rockwell Hardness Scale. It was developed by Stanley Rockwell in 1919. He worked in a ball bearing plant and he needed to develop a way to understand and measure the hardness of steel. And it was quick, accurate, and repeatable. So the tool steel we use in woodworking and wood turning has a certain hardness. Now I'm not going to talk about tool steel as it's usually presented in woodworking catalogs. You know, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of alloys used in tools. Okay, um, there's a file which has a very high carbon content. Okay, that's an alloy. It's not just pure steel, it's something else. It's a lot of carbon, which makes it really hard and brittle. When we talk about the Rockwell hardness scale, it's the scale C used for steel. And I guess that's the only one used for measuring the hardness of steel. Now, the higher the number, the harder the steel. The lower the number, the softer the steel is. Now, when we're looking at a tool, whatever that tool may be, we need to consider the hardness. We don't want it to break. We don't want it to be unsafe. We don't want it to bend if the steel is too soft. Now, some of the things we would look at as woodworkers and wood turners, all right, hardness and softness. If a tool is really, really hard to the point of being brittle, it could be unsafe. If it's too soft, it could bend. So if a tool is really, really hard, it's gonna sharpen really well and maybe hold an edge better and longer. If the steel is a little on the soft side, it may be easy to sharpen it, and the edge may be pretty sharp at first, but it's gonna dull quickly. So that's a consideration. If a tool is very hard to the point of being brittle, well, it's gonna chip and maybe be unsafe. Now, when we talk about hardening of tools, and they measure that with a Rockwell hardness scale, it's hardened on the surface, and that's where they test it. Inside that tool, as you grind that tool away, the hardness may be a little bit different, and that's indicated by a range. All right, so the tool may be 58 to 60 on the Rockwell hardness scale, because they've got to allow a little bit of flexibility in measuring that tool. Now I'm gonna put up a link someplace like in the description. It's from the Lee Valley website and it's an article on uh, testing hardness of tool steel and that might be something that you might wanna check out. Now I have spread out a bunch of tools. They're not necessarily wood turning tools or even wood working tools, but I'm trying to give you a sense of what the Rockwell hardness is in each one of these items. Some of my research found that there's a disparity between, say, one hammer and another hammer. And it all comes down maybe to buying a good quality tool that's not going to fail on you in some respect, whether it's chipping or bending or whatever it is. Now, in my research, I found that a real anvil, a blacksmith's anvil, is around 50 on the Rockwell hardness scale. This one is just something I use around my shop and the top of that is all dented up. So maybe there's a lesson there that we want this to be dented and not the tool we're using to hammer something on this tool. So um, a lot of times it's all about safety. Now we've got a couple hammers here. Hammers are typically around 40 or 45 on the Rockwell hardness scale. And I was reading something about ball-peen hammers that you might use on an anvil 
and they may be even softer. Knives and scissors, I got some scissors here, are around 55 to 60. And something else I found is there's a wide range in Rockwell hardness, say in knives. Okay, I've, I saw a lot of them that were advertised at 55 or 56, but some of the harder ones were at 60. Uh, there's a nice video on Japanese knives, and those go up into the 60s, maybe 62 or 64, like kitchen knives. If you have a knife you're gonna use out in the wilderness, you go out in the woods, and you have uh, that sort of a knife, you don't want it chipping or breaking on you when you're chopping a little bit of wood for a fire. Here's a couple items that uh, you may be familiar with. Here's a file. And when I first started wood churning, I made some tools from files. Not a good idea. Wasn't a good idea then, not a good idea now. It's uh, high carbon. There's a lot of carbon in this, which makes it brittle. And I broke one. And it looked like a piece of glass. You don't want that shattering and coming off at you. But if you're going to use a file on another piece of metal, you want that to be pretty hard. So, lawnmower blade, which has seen better days. And part of my message is that you can sort of guess what the Rockwell hardness is. Now, a lot of items I found specifically what exactly the Rockwell hardness number was but I had a hard time. You're gonna find more information in articles on the internet rather than YouTube videos. I didn't find anything on woodworking or wood churning on the Rockwell hardness scale. Now, what do you think the Rockwell number needs to be on a lawnmower blade? 70? Well, if it's really high like that and it's brittle, you don't want that chipping off on the corner or someplace if you hit a rock and flying off and hitting somebody. So I suspect these are, you know, 50, 48, somewhere in there. Okay, now wood turning tools. That's what this is all about, because we're wood turners. This is a Carter and Son tool, and they advertise in their literature that the cutting end of this is 68 on the Rockwell hardness scale, and that's pretty hard, and it takes a great edge. I got this tool, oh, I don't know, probably a week ago or so, and I've been using it quite a bit, and I have not sharpened it yet. I'm gonna see how long I can go. This is straight out of the package, which is kind of rare for wood turning tools. Wood turning tools are fairly hard, and once in a while we see them break. You know, I see pictures on Facebook once in a while where uh, a wood turning tool has broken. Well, look at the manufacturer of those tools. You know, they're made in China, and they're cheap and they may not know exactly what they're doing with hardening in those situations. Okay, here are a couple hollowing tools. That's one of my Trent Bosch hollowing tools and it's got a high speed steel tip on it. And again, I don't know what the uh, Rockwell number is on that, but if it was 70 or 72 or something, it'd probably break. So 62, you know, I don't know, I'm not really sure. But again, you can get to the point where you can kind of guess and figure out what that Rockwell hardness is. Now here's another one of Trent's tools. It has a carbide tip in it. Now carbide, oh, that's a different story. Carbide is not steel. And I got a router bit right here. Carbide is carbide, okay? And it is around 90 on the Rockwell hardness scale. And that's very brittle. You can judge for yourself what your woodworking, wood churning tools are on the Rockwell hardness scale. There's a lot of applications for sharpening, for safety and uh, wearability and all those kind of things I covered. Well, I think you're gonna get the idea. Rockwell hardness is not that difficult to understand. It's a matter of safety, largely. When they do the test for the Rockwell hardness. They press a point into the steel and that makes an indentation and then they measure that. Now this particular mortise chisel has actually a couple little dots on that right there that they tested this steel with. I've had these for 25 years. So if you ever see a little indentation on a tool that you buy, that's probably where that comes from. They're testing the steel. 
and I wish more tool makers in wood turning especially would indicate what the Rockwell hardness is on their tools because I can understand that. So thank you once again for tuning in and I'll talk to you next time.